Okay, a short podcast today on calcium channel blockers. Calcium channel blockers are used by the medical professionals to um, abate hypertension and and to control the you know the, the rigidification or the contraction of the vessels and allow for a permanent state of not permanent but more dilation and better blood flow and and um, and the idea itself. Um, is good when it's done naturally, but and the problem with some of these medications which are given is not only can you be sued, some doctors, I mean doctors can be sued for not using them, um, but um, there can also be um, problems. It's almost like you take a wrench somewhere and then like it stops something and then over here like something else starts happening so then you take another wrench and you're holding that in place and then that's kind of stopping something and then you got a while before something else starts bugging out. So, um, and I'm not saying that that might not be a proper practice at a given state of a d given disease, um, but um, overall low deficiency of magnesium and um, other factors of just typical nutrient deficiency um, and just being deficient in a few basic like vitamin K2 and vitamin D and, and, and magnesium and understanding how to overcome those deficiencies because uh, they're not easy. They're not just, I'll take some pills and we're all good. They don't work that way. You have to have much more, use your whole, whole heart, mind, and soul basically to figure these things out. It's not just a given and so um, it takes uh, concentration, effort, uh, the truth or whatever. And so, um, so these things can be negative in the sense that, you know, there's a way to do this naturally. Um, the calcium was the original calcium, I mean, uh, magnesium is the original calcium channel blocker. It allows the natural process of calcium channel blocking and its high levels uh, optimized like levels in the body and tissues is going to allow the body to be able to um, add the magnesium where the calcium is in where there's a high hypercalcemia. -cal so if you have uh, too much calcium hitting into the cell walls, what happens? It becomes rigid. The cell becomes rigid. And so magnesium is no longer able to counterbalance that effect with, with the flexible nature of what it adds to that uh, formula. Not only structurally, but even um, like structurally in the tissues, structurally in the flexibility, even the teeth have magnesium and um, calcium. So calcium makes them brittle, but the magnesium makes them flexible. So the two together, you have strong teeth. So, um, um, so that's once you're at the level where you have this kind of rigidity coming in, then there's a lack of viscosity. And so the lack of viscosity comes through brittleness. I was reading the other day on electrocution. I was reading something about electricity, and I stumbled into uh, an interesting fact about how, you know, there's greater resistance and more shock whenever, there, you know, the water's, you're in water or there's something wet, your skin is wet. Okay, so that's kind of obvious. But then the second thing they said was, or if there's cracks in your skin. And so that's how it works. It's like the more that we're the cells can crack, the less viscous they are, the less permeable. I mean, the more permeable they are because now they've got these cracks instead of viscosity, which allows for uh, uh, selective permeability. Um, and so this is kind of a problem um, at the cellular level. And what's at the, what? 30% of the energy of the cell is trying to get calcium out. You know, so there's a lot of things from prostate cancer studies on, you know, they study all these milk products and they find out that people that eat more dairy products have more ca prostate cancer. But so this is all this calcium that's being shot into the system. But those same calcium products, because they're general industrial products, most of them, they're weak in vitamin D. They don't have enough vitamin D or magnesium in them anymore. Or they're, those things are not being supplemented in the diet through the right types of foods or you know, this, this notion has been lost. So when the vitamin D and the magnesium are out of the formula of the calcium intake, well, then here we go. We start calcifying everything, all the tissues, including the brain. And so cancer comes from these, these areas as well. So knowing how, um, you know, it's a key feature in cell death. Once the cells start becoming rigid and dying to a certain degree, then there's the anarchic cells and there's a problem detoxifying. You, the DNA and RNA aren't working. You can't, 
use the um, DNR and RNA to, for repairs and transcription. And so that whole system gets broke. Magnesium helps stabilize that ATP, you know, the, the, the way the cell produces energy. So it stabilizes that system. So when that system's not stable, then it can't, it can't, it's like when you're not stable, you're not going to try to, you're not, you can't take the time to release. You, you're just all in active mode, you know? And so that, um, that state, that kind of, uh, pyurvic, uh, uh, what is it called? Um, 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 pyurvic, I think it's a pyurvic, pyurvic acid. That pyurvic acid state where the nerves are just and there's no parasympathetic, there's no serotonin and GABA and all these things that magnesium helps to contribute to at high level, including serotonin. Like all these like relaxation and dilation, all of these other principles, the parasympathetic principles in the body get sacrificed for this uh, calcium and sodium filling the cells and rigidifying everything. That's that cell level is also in our own stresses how we contribute to that our own fears everything else contributes to that hardening so staying so there's a connection between everything that's living i mean when you take a cell out of the body and you analyze it it's dead right but if you i mean even if it's alive in its little petri dish or whatever it's no longer a part of the body so the only thing you can take it apart you can see it's mechanics in a way even if it's alive there but once it's in the body and even when it's alive um, it, you, it's no longer a mechanical thing, even if it's in a petri dish. It's not a mechanical thing because we can look at its mechanics, but it's not a mechanical thing. It's adapting all the time. So there's all sorts of um, permutations happening that we can't calculate. I mean, we we can get we can use one DNA strand and use gain gain to function. Uh, techniques to, to, to have that strand act in certain ways or start to change. But this one strand out of a bazillion, you know, th these permutations are happening all the time. So we're still at a very small level of controlling anything. Um, and that's okay. Um, but um, so this calcium channel blocker, this is such a key feature of magnesium. If it's not one of the most key features and part of it comes to its flexible structure, that's one of the key reasons why it it helps calcium to come in there and be useful. It's not, it's not just blocking per se. It also is, is adding its own substance to that to allow the calcium to be useful in the cell. So it's like, you know, to avoid oxidation. And, and so it's getting, it's like a limiter, a buffer. It's helping bring the right amount in. And then the vitamin D, of course, is helping to aim that calcium into different areas of the body. So if we're short in vitamin D, the aim is off. And then we start aiming in the wrong places and we got calcium deposits everywhere. And we have bone spurs and we have calcification of arteries and brain and everything else. So magnesium is the limiting factor in all of these things. And I always recommend to people to get the right stuff, to not get cheap stuff for $1.50 a week that they have on the market. Um, get the $3 a week stuff, blue glass bottles only, but no endocrine disruptors from Zextine inside logo. If it doesn't have the logo, it's not the real thing. There's plenty of people calling themselves Zextine because huh? there's no control on the word Zextine. So it has to have the Zextine inside logo. Are these, uh, these are self-certified companies. 95% of the U.S. companies are doing this. And so to find the right thing, you have to get, go to the source. And this is in Holland in a city called Vindam where this natural salt pillow formation is. And so they stamp the, the, the label on the bottles and so the, the trademark. So get the right stuff. Um, no endocrine disruptors. Never in plastic. Uh, th this contributes. This, this mineral is way too ubiquitous in the body to, to mess with the plastic chelation and leaching and endocrine disruption and estrogen mimicking capacity of plastics so even the most safe you know bps and bpa i mean bpa has been okay we got that one that one's out but now there's bps and there's bps uh, variants and different things so we want to stay away from that we want to get uh, glass and go straight to the real thing so come check us out at theheartoftradition.com